Hello everyone, in this tutorial I'll be teaching you how to move from this to something like this. So adding physics to your cloth outfits for metahumans or any other character and eventually obviously transmuting that into any other metahuman that's using the same outfit but that needs the physics applied. So let's go ahead and jump into how to create the very basis of a physics simulation. Go ahead and find your metahuman blueprint and then go and find the skeletal mesh under the components of the details panel here in the blueprint itself. All we need to do is simply go ahead and find where that skeletal mesh is and we are going to make it from scratch. So first thing we need to do is create a cloth asset. We're just going to leave it there. And what we'll do is double click and open it up. And as we did in a prior tutorial, we're just going to delete everything. And let's do a couple of things. First and foremost, what we need to do is we need to bring this asset back again, the metahuman asset back into the flow. So what we'll do is we'll find it once again and make sure that this is the one. And we're just simply going to drag and drop it. And what we're doing is essentially dragging and dropping a reference to it. So the next node is skeletal mesh import. So we're importing this as a physical collection, a cloth collection for the metahuman, for the cloth creator. The next node that we are going to be applying is called weight map. And in this node, before we continue on the output name, we can put any name, but just go for max distance and that's going to be perfectly fine. Next node that we're going to need is a default sim. We're going to be doing the default simulation and finally, we need a max distance simulation, max distance config. Now, instantly, while we're doing this, we can do show height inputs, and we are going to show the max distance weight map input. And this is why we named this one max distance, because it is the same name that is in the weight map, but we can change this one by default, this max distance. This is going to tell how much the cloth is going to veer away from the skinned simulation. Now we're not doing skinning or weight transfer here because since it is a skeletal mesh, it already contains all that information. To set physics asset, because that one we are going to be needing, and then we are going to finally go into a chaos cloth asset terminal, and that's going to be the end of our line. So we are going from the skeletal mesh itself to importing it as a cloth piece. Then we're going to paint the wave map. We're going to do a default simulation configuration, which is essentially how the cloth is going to behave. And I will teach you what all these little things mean. Then we're going to do simulation max distance configuration. How far can it go? How much can it veer from the skinned process? And then set physics asset where we're going to tell what physics colliders is it going to use, finally exporting it as a cloth. Let's jump into the wave map. Now in the wave map base where we are going to be painting what we want to be simulated and what we don't want to be simulated. And it has this little viewport, a couple of options up here, and then we have the painting options here on the left hand side. What I suggest you usually need to do is switch to 3D sim, and this way we kind of get to see the actual mesh. So in here on the left hand side, we do have the action type here on action and we do have the brush, which means we can just literally just paint it and be done with it. We also have the ability to do poly laser, which lets us literally select and paint. And we also have a gradient. Now, in this case, I'm going to be using the gradient. Now, the gradient is a bit strange. We select where we want the gradient to start by just simply click and drag. And then we're going to be doing control click to select with red the vertices where we want that gradient to end. But we're selecting the negative first and the positive after. That's that's kind of the strange part of it. So what that will do is instantly give us some simulation. And remember that we are painting here what we want to be simulated and what we don't want to be simulated. And if we check the 2D sim, we also can see that we could have painted essentially the UVs. But in some assets, it might be easier to paint the 3D. Some assets might be easier to paint the 2D. Let's go down the line. And in simulation default config is where we have a ton of information on mass, on stiffness, on tether and collision. Now I will be showing what all these means on this other project. This is the setup I created and let's take a look at all of the properties or the main properties here from cloth. So default density is going to be on the left hand side 4.35 versus 2. This is heaviness, the thickness. So if we're going for silk versus heavy leather we would ump the density in the mass properties. The stiffness comes in three. We have area stiffness, binds stiffness, and edges. So essentially how flowy this is, how free the cloth is from the edges or from the areas or quadrants within the cloth itself. So default of one on the left-hand side and zero on the right. So we exaggerated that. 
Tether stiffness is the stretchiness. So you'll see that on the left-hand side, we have the default of one. And on the right-hand side, you see how this is like bouncing. It feels more, more like some rubbery or jelly substance, right? So if we're going for something like that, we would lower the tether stiffness. Then we have the damping. The damping is essentially more controllable or dampening the velocities slash getting this slowdown effect uh, or more controllable. So if we're seeing that we have a lot of wildness on our cloth, maybe I'm thinking that the damping will help a little bit. Obviously, this goes from 0 0.01 to 0 0.5, so it's a very extreme change, and we get this super uniform um, example here. So we may want to be mindful of what we do. You can see that even if I just move it, it feels like it's falling in slow motion. So the dampening is something that will, the damping is something that will help control, but keep in mind that it generates this slowdown effect if you do, um, if you put down a very high number. Then we have drag, which is essentially the higher the drag, the more inertia or pull we let the cloth have according to any wind source or movement source. So in this case, you see how it's it's flowing a lot more because in this scene, I actually have wind pushing from the left to the right. So in the left-hand side, we have default drag of 0 0.035 and on the right-hand side, we have 0 0.15 and it's letting the cloth being dragged way more and way more extremely than the default value. And lift does the same thing. And we finally have gravity scale, which is pretty much the same as you would expect. So now that we've seen all of that in our configurations, we can start playing around with these configurations at your own leisure. The one thing that I would say is not explained is the following, the collision. Now collision is what this piece of cloth is going to be simulating against. And we have collision thickness, friction coefficient, and self-collisions and self-collision spheres. So all of these are going to change the way the cloth behaves, but we'll check that out once we set our physics asset. Max simulation distance is how far is it going to go from the skinning, so corresponding to the upper bound of the wave map. How far it will obey this wave map instead of going all full simulation, it's gonna, it's gonna get it a, lit, a little lower. So we could kind of punch these numbers down. Now in the set physics asset, it's very important, extremely important, that we go ahead and find the physics asset of the metahuman to which we are applying this piece of cloth. So we're gonna go for new metahuman character and simply in here, you could filter it by physics asset or you can just simply type PHY and you're gonna get the physics asset. Now, this is mine. And even though it doesn't have the chest, if we open it up, you'll see that the colliders are still. And then we finally have the cloth asset terminal. In the simulation default configuration beyond thickness, which we'll cover here in a second, all the way to the bottom, we also have the simulation. And iteration count and subdivision count are going to make it so this simulation is better and more expensive or not. Here we can see simulation time and check it out. If I do five iteration counts, you can see that we are now going to 1.4 milliseconds. And if I go five subdivisions, you can see that we are now triplicating. Now it's making it look far better, but it's more expensive. If you're doing gaming, keep in mind that it will affect your experience. So on the top right hand side, we have preview details for this cloth editor. So what we'll do right now is we are going to load our metahuman and we are going to take a look at an animation. So if you exported a combined mesh, you do have the ability to use it as a test reference here. But if you don't have an exported combined mesh, it's perfectly fine and you can just simply bring whatever mesh your metahuman is going to be using. So it doesn't really matter. This is just for preview purposes. And then we're just going to find the walk animation here from Manny and company. So as we have that, we can now hit play and we can take a look at how this is behaving. Now, one thing that I notice is that the colliders, even though it looks that it's super far away from the actual leg, this is something that this viewport shows only. When we see this in the world, we'll see that the collision is far closer. But if you're experiencing things or problems with the colliders, that's where the default simulation config comes in here on the bottom right side under the collision property. So you'll see how it feels like it's super far away. I can crunch this to three and then do a hard reset up here. That's the hard reset. And you see how it's even worse now, right? And to make this very clear what a collider is, I can do this to 50. That's what it's doing, right? It's the, the thickness of the collision. Then we have friction coefficient. Now friction coefficient, the more we have of this, the more the cloth will stick to the collider. And the less we have this, 
the more the cloth will flow with the collider, right? So it now use CCD is continuous collision detection. Self collisions is where the cloth is going to try and collide with itself. And then finally, we have self collision spheres, which is propulsion forces that the cloth has all around the cloth itself as spheres to try and bounce from them instead of bouncing from the actual self collision mesh, like the geometry itself. So this is better performant, but it lower quality, of course. And CCD is essentially miscalation between moving particles. So these three are expensive, self-collation, self-collation sphere, and CCD. So if you see that you're having issues, maybe play around with these to try and fix those. And to add all of that to our MetaHuman, we need to go ahead and open Blueprint of the MetaHuman. We're just going to remove the skeletal mesh because we're no longer going to be using a skeletal mesh. We are going to be using now a new thing. So we're going to click on the body and we're going to add chaos cloth component. And what we'll do is we are going to now under the asset here in the cloth component, we are going to find the asset that we just created this one right here. And we see that nothing happens. We're just simply going to compile and save for cloth to be simulated. We need to be simulating. And you'll see what I meant by the collisions being much better here. And that's how we apply physics to a skeletal mesh that is converted now to a cloth asset. Now that is for this cloth asset. Now what happens if we change our metahuman? Now the issue here, what we get is a skeletal mesh once we change the body and we export a new metahuman. Now that we have our new metahuman exported and we have our previously created cloth asset, we can simply duplicate it and call this one modified or whatever you want to call it. We're going to save and what we need to do is replace a couple of things inside this cloth setup. First and foremost, we want to replace the original static mesh or the original skeletal mesh, I should say, for the one for our new metahuman. So we're going to simply drag and drop and we're going to drag and connect. And secondly, and last thing is we can check that the wave map is fine because they are exactly the same. They are both nanite disabled and they both have the same amount of vertices, the same amount of LODs and the same amount of sections in the LOD. So if you see problems here, one of those three is the issue. And finally, we're going to set the new physics asset, the physics asset for the character that we just exported. And now we finally have that new physics asset and we can save. We'll see that we have the original and then we have the duplicate. Now, by duplicating, we don't duplicate a data flow asset because the data flow is the same. We're just changing properties inside each of the nodes. And we now go into our new MetaHuman Blueprint. And with the new cloth selected, we can click on the body, hit Add, and do Cloth Component. And since we had it selected, it's already working. We're just simply going to compile, save. And now if we simulate, we can see that we have physics on this other metahuman, the same exact physics. Both are using the same exact data flow. So it comes down to doing one of these ones. And then every time we export, we just duplicate. So when we are doing different metahumans, we just duplicate. And inside the duplicate, we change what we are importing, the skeletal mesh from the new metahuman. And we change the physics asset because both metahumans are extremely different.